When the problem restrictions are a little bit confusing, I like to rewrite them in a simplified form so that I can refer to it more quickly. A filled or empty square will change its status depending on the number of filled neighbors. A filled square stays filled if it has two or three filled neighbors. So I'll put a two and a three here. An empty square becomes filled if it has three neighbors, so I'll put a three here. All the other squares become empty, but I'm gonna be a little more explicit by writing in the number of filled neighbors. So for an empty square to remain empty, it can't have three filled neighbors, which means it has zero, one, two, four, five, six, seven, or eight. I probably won't need to worry about these larger numbers because our outer squares are gonna be empty anyway. For our filled square to become empty, it can't have two or three filled neighbors, which means it will have zero or one, not two or three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But again, we probably won't be worrying about these larger numbers. For our counting, I think it makes sense to do casework on whether the starting center is either filled or empty. If it starts off filled, in order to remain filled, it should have two or three filled neighbors. Let's start with two filled neighbors. Our two filled neighbors themselves must have either zero or one neighbor. They can't be zero because they're also gonna be neighboring the center square. If the two filled neighbors are adjacent to each other, they will both have two filled neighbors, which means they will remain filled. So let's put our first filled neighbor in this corner and our second filled neighbor over here, and we'll count how many filled neighbors for each square. In the upper left corner, this has one, this has three, this has one. Our center square has two. We notice this top square has three filled neighbors and it's empty, so it's going to become filled. So we're gonna have something like this, which means this is not gonna be a solution. Let's continue by having one filled neighbor in a corner and a second one over here, and let's count the number of filled neighbors. This has two, so it's going to remain filled. This has one, this has one, which means they're gonna become empty. But if we look at this top square, it has three filled neighbors. Empty squares with three filled neighbors become filled. So this is also not a solution. Continuing by putting our first filled square in a corner, let's put our second one on the opposite side and we'll count neighbors. Again, our center square has two filled neighbors, so it'll remain filled. These two filled squares have one neighbor each, so they're gonna become empty. Looking at our empty squares, this has two neighbors, so these two are gonna stay empty. One neighbor here, two, and two. None of our empty squares have three filled neighbors, so this is our first solution. We're counting rotations and reflections separately. We can rotate to this, so the x's are in the other diagonal. So this actually represents two solutions. That's it for arrangements, where one of our shaded neighbors is in a corner. Let's see if all of our filled neighbors cannot be in corners. We'll put our first one here, and our second one here, but we notice right away that this corner has three filled neighbors and it starts off empty, so it's going to become filled. If we arrange them like this and count neighbors, we see again that this empty square has three filled neighbors, so it will become filled. Our center can remain filled if it also has three filled neighbors. Looking at our solution for two filled neighbors, we see that there's no way we can squeeze in a third filled square without creating an empty square with three filled neighbors. So we're done with our first case. Now we'll start with a center square that's empty and after the transformation we want it to fill. That only happens with three filled neighbors. Those filled neighbors must themselves disappear, which means they can have either zero or one filled neighbor. Let's make two of our filled neighbors neighbor each other so they'll each have one neighbor and they'll empty. And then we'll take our third filled neighbor by itself. With no neighbors, it'll also turn empty. Our third neighbor can't go in this corner square or over here on this edge because it's still going to neighbor this top square. So let's start by putting our third filled square in the lower right and we'll count neighbors. One and one for each of these, so they'll become empty. Our middle square has three, so it will fill. This square over here has no neighbors, so it will empty. Now let's count the empty squares and we're looking for empty squares that have three filled neighbors. This has one, this has two, this has two, one and zero. So this is another solution. We can rotate this in four ways and we can reflect it. So this is a total of eight solutions. Let's put our first two filled neighbors in the same spot and let's move our third one over here to the bottom. And let's count neighbors. 
We have three here, zero, one, and one. And now we're looking for empty squares with three neighbors. And I see one over here. So this one's going to end up filled. So this is not a solution. Keep these here and move our third filled square to the left. I can see right away this empty square has three filled neighbors and it's going to become filled. That's it for two filled neighbors that are adjacent like this. Why not have them be neighbors diagonally? Let's see where our third filled square can go. Not here, not here because it'll still be a neighbor. Let's put it over here. We've got three here, so it'll, it'll become filled in the center. These two are neighbors of each other, so they'll become empty. This one in the corner has no neighbors, so it's going to become empty. Now let's check the empty squares. This one has two neighbors. This has one, this has one, this has two, and this has two. None of our empty squares have three filled neighbors, so this is another solution. There are four rotations, so we actually have four solutions here. That's it for having two of our shaded squares adjacent and a third not adjacent. Let's see if we can make all of our three shaded squares not have any neighbors. So we can put the first one here, the second one here, and let's put the third one here. And we'll count neighbors. This one has three, zero, zero, and zero. This has two, one, two, one, and zero. None of our empty squares has three filled neighbors, so this is another solution. With four rotations, that's four solutions. Let's put two of our shaded squares here again and our third one down below. Three again in the center, zero, zero, and zero. Two, 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 one, and one. Here's another solution with four rotations. These are the only ways that our three shaded squares cannot be neighbors of each other. So we're done counting and we can total up our cases. From case one, we have two solutions. And from case two, we have eight and three fours. That's 22 solutions, or option C. If you want me to solve any more AMC or Amy problems, please leave them in the comments.